Hi, and welcome to The Community Producers, a monthly show put on by volunteers like myself. I'm Cheyenne Shapitka, and on this, our first episode, we will check out a seniors program in Castlegar and visit local legend Joe Hill's secret hideaway. Our first segment comes to you from Rob Wyatt, a local diver who has been exploring the lakes in our area since 1987. Up next, Rob takes us on one of his dives to a local CPR barge wreck located in Kootenai Lake near the RCMP station. By the 1900s, Nelson was a sophisticated city with many fine hotels, a Hudson's Bay Company store, and an electric streetcar. This is the site of the old CPR shipbuilding yard in Nelson. Many steam tugs and transfer barges were built and serviced right here over 100 years ago. The easiest way to access a CPR barge wreck is to walk up the old CPR shipyard beachfront until you get to the RCMP station. Directly out of the RCMP station lies the CPR bar track. This massive 15 car transfer barge was taken out of service and converted into a floating wharf at the CPR shipyard. Eventually, this barge sank in deep water but was so long some of the bow protruded above the waterline near shore. The wreck is around 150 feet long by 40 feet wide. Depths can range from 8 feet deep to 55 feet deep on the wreck and the surrounding site can be over 65 deep depending on the lake level. An old wheelbarrow rests next to the wreck along with all sorts of other tools, fittings, and bottles from the early 1900s. On all transfer barges, large timber stop blocks were constructed at the stern end of each set of tracks to stop the rail cars from rolling off in rough weather. While swimming by the stop blocks, I can't help but wonder how many CPR employees would sit on them during lunch break, enjoying the view of the lake in the early 1900s. With most of the decking missing, the corridors of the barge make for interesting swim throughs. When this barge finally sank, the bow was above the waterline and became a navigational hazard in the arm. The bow was eventually dynamited and this large piece of decking lies off the side in deeper water. The area around the wreck is littered with historical relics from the shipyard. This old launch was used to put the newly constructed tugs and barges into the lake. On a beautiful day, there's nothing like that view. An old coal burning stove lies next to massive pipes on the bottom. Close by, a boiler stack is another reminder of how much activity there was here in the early 1900s. This steel dory is crushed under pilings that have corroded together over the last hundred years. The entire site here is a swim back in time. As I make my way to the surface, I am already looking forward to my next visit to this exciting and historical area in Kootenai Lake. Thank you for watching.
to Castlegar now, where we check out the Seniors Outreach and Support Program, commonly known as SOS. This program strives to promote independence, alleviate stress, and decrease isolation among seniors. In this next clip, two SOS practicum students talk to us about why this is such a crucial service for seniors in our area. Did you know that in a two-year period in Castlegar, the 363 seniors received support in over 1,500 appointments? Or that Castlegar's highest number of clients are between the ages of 65 to 74 years of age, with the next highest group being 75 years and older? The seniors' demographic will continue to increase, not only as people age, but also as people live longer. The need for services will only increase. We need to be ready. As a community, we need to ensure our seniors receive the supports they need. This is why we have SOS. SOS stands for Seniors, Outreach, and Support. This program is a part of Castlegar and District Community Services Society. This short film is to raise awareness of the importance of the SOS program to our seniors and as well as our community. First, we will hear from the program coordinator of SOS, Sandy McCrae. I guess about 10 years. Um, part of the work is dealing one-on-one -on -one with seniors and supporting their families through changes that they go through. And the other part is educating the community around elder abuse and what can we do as a community to prevent that. Um, I would say probably about five years ago I saw a real need for more specific direct advocacy um, where seniors need one-on-one -on -one time with someone who can support them. What we found was that when we would sit down with them to talk about an issue that they had, once we built that relationship, some deeper, more uh, serious issues often came up and would be, um, would be dealt with as well. I think there's such a diverse uh, clientele in the seniors population, whether you talk about mobility issues or income or uh, the needs and wants of those people, there's so much diversity and you really have to be adaptable in order to support all of those needs and, and in the SOS, Nicole and I have been able to do that. I'm Nicole, I've been in the Seniors Outreach and Support Program for three years. When the clients come in that they have multiple issues, it seems sometimes they'll come in with one thing and end up staying with us for as long as it takes to sort out all the other issues that come along with that. Some of the issues that we see often um, are housing related. Um, a lot of times we have a multitude of forms to fill out with folks. They need help with CPP, um, things like grants, safer grants. Now we will hear from two clients of SOS, Shema and Carl. SOS part of the program here um, is a lifesaver for me. So obviously with that, that you would probably recommend this service to other elders in our community? Would you well, not? I, sure I would recommend it to other people. Um, and I have actually done that. <laughs> because she's, she's supportive, the, the program is very... Um, I never felt... Uh, catered to or belittled or in any way made to feel that um, it was my fault, my situation, because it wasn't, and it made very clear to me that it wasn't, and that was a big part of how it helped me out. And if it, if it wasn't for community services, I, I wouldn't have got anywhere. They did a fantastic job, and especially um, Nicole, she was just well, everything, she just grabbed the whole thing and it was good, very good. Community service wasn't over there. There wouldn't be much for the seniors. Mm -hmm. So we are practicum students with Sandy and Nicole at Community Services, working to help her promote the SOS and Better at Home programs that she runs for seniors in the community. Our aging demographic is continuing to increase. 
majority of our population in Castlegar and our surrounding communities is elders. I'm really hopeful that we can continue for further resources to support them and to assist them, assist them <laughs> in their times of need. It's what we provide isn't offered by anyone else and I think that's that's a really a key piece um, and I think we wouldn't be getting as as many referrals as we do if we were duplicating service. Hope you've learned something about the services for seniors in our area. Um, you see a senior today, smile at them, give them a hug. We'd like to say thank you to the community for all of your support. The outdoor exhibit of original sculptures in Castlegar has earned that community the distinction of Sculpture Capital of Canada in 2015. Displaying art by both local and international artists, Sculpture Walk has become a real draw for tourists and locals alike. In our next segment, we will get an in-depth look at two area artists whose work was featured in the walking tour. This is my commute to work. It's brutal. <laughs> when I saw some old logging cable right beside a cedar tree, I was amazed at how similar the texture of the logging cable was to the bark. And I love the contrast of logging cable being something that we harvest the forest with and making a tree out of it. This is the outside of the stump, very bark-like texture, and inside we'll have a, a cedar bench inside here, and the inside of the tree will all be lined with cedar. And so, yeah, you'll be able to sit down inside and it'll all be nice and smooth, just like the inside of a, of a hollow cedar stump. Ah, oh, cool. right on. We haven't sat here before, this is be good. <laughs> I've been sculpting outside of timber framing has been 15 years. Most time it's been ab abstract wooden pieces until sculpture walk came around and then wood doesn't do so well in the outdoors. So concrete and steel is my new thing. I think it's encouraging to put your hands on it. Although I've got a gloved hand, but uh, <laughs> I think it's great. So the sculpture is called Regeneration. It's, it's a celebration of the forest. And so out of this giant cedar stump made out of logging cable, there's going to be a small nurse tree coming out, three or four feet tall. This is the initial frond, and then there'll be a group of smaller fronds that get welded onto the steel branch. So we're just about to pour another frond. 2,400 degrees. This is what we use to uh, make the cedar fronds. They were pilfered fire hydrant caps, but <laughs> it, it's a long story and I I thought shouldn't. you got them from the dump. <laughs> yeah, I got, them from the dump. from the dump. I got them from the dump. This is talcum powder. That's as a release for the molten uh, brass. Making metal molten and then pouring it into something that I've carved and being able to reproduce that and then add it to something, it's, it's, to me, it's, it's magic. It's like alchemy. I've really only been doing the public art, like the large sculpture pieces for about five years now. It is the creation process for me, whether it's making a garden or making a meal, building a house or making a sculpture. It's the act of creating something that really, I get my rocks off. Like it's, it's just, I feel so much so alive when I'm creating. This is us experimenting. We haven't taken any courses in foundry pouring metal, but it seems to. Yeah, it seems to be pretty just straightforward. So that's the back end and we'll just pop it out. 
Because we're such good friends, I just thought it would be neat to uh, collaborate on a piece. So there's another prawn. To take on a project this big, I'd, I'd rather do it with Spring than without him. I think Spring's got keeps of energy and show and, up every day. And I'm a dreamer. I, I'm like, uh, yeah, definitely fly by the seat of my pants. Just like I get an idea and I'm just going to do this. Where Christopher is very practical and everything has to line up. We have to do this, this, and this before we get to that. And that's how, this is what's going to support that. We're having to add uh, pieces in because the flare of the stump is so much wider than the top. This is the piece that Christopher will be cutting me right now on a nice long steep angle. Achtung baby! I think steel is fantastic. You can apply it and create something that was not intended. You know, and then it can be an amazing thing. You can manipulate it. Here's the recent, the, the cut one and we'll, we'll apply it to the the piece and then uh, add the silicon bronze wire afterwards. If you push just right yeah. there. Yeah. Hold it. We're just learning this whole process. We've never really welded before. We're just practicing. Working with 1,300 feet of logging cable, it's a bit of by gosh and by golly. When I think of people coming and seeing Regeneration, I would want them to, first off, recognize it. I think that most people will have stood in awe of a little tree growing out of a, of a veteran stump. I'd like people to walk away with an interactive interaction <laughs> with a piece. Like, a lot of our, you're not encouraged to touch. With this, we're encouraging people not just to touch, but to sit down, relax, to, to experience the piece. Hi, I'm Cody with this week's community calendar. The Grand Forks Chess Club will be meeting at the Grand Forks Public Library on April 8th from 3 to 4.30. All ages and experience levels are welcome. The West Kootenai Trade Show April 21st to 23rd from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Castlegar Community Complex, offering a, a wide variety of booths exhibits and food vendors. For more information, you can visit the Chamber website, castlegard.com. And the 12th annual Spring Fling in downtown Castlegard will be happening from on April 29th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., offering three-on-three -three hockey, children's games, and local vendors in Kinsman Park. I'm Cody, and this has been your Community Calendar. That's it for our first episode of The Community Producers. If you have a short film or video you'd like to share with us, get in touch with us at our Shaw TV Kootenays Facebook page or send us an email to kootenays.shawtv at sjrb.ca. I'm your host, Shiana Shapitka. Thanks for watching.